Let me guess, for one reason or another, you've decided to start looking into getting a fish tank and you've fallen down the rabbit hole watching videos all about them. Well, you finally stumbled upon the last video that you're gonna need to watch because we're gonna share with you everything you need to know to start up your very first fish tank. So let's get started. I could list off a million reasons why you should start an aquarium. It's a fun and relaxing stress reliever that'll provide you with a nice escape from the madness that is our daily lives. This also gives you a nice way to become in touch with nature and have a pet that won't poop and pee in the house or dirty up a litter box. So to help you get started, we're gonna go over the absolute basics so that you know exactly what you're getting into. Let's start off with tank size. Tank size is one of the most critical decisions you need to make before getting started. So many things that you do moving forward will be dictated by the size tank you have, so it's a good idea to put some thought into the size tank you're going to need before you go out and buy one. Believe me, it's a bummer to buy a tank, get it all set up and running, go to the fish store, fall in love with the fish just to find out the tank's not big enough. I've been there and it sucks. Two main factors will dictate your decision on tank size, budget and the amount of space that you have that you wanna put it in. Now I wanna throw a third factor at you, the type of fish you want. If you decide you wanna keep Oscars, you're gonna need a much bigger tank than if you wanna keep Tetras. Figure out your budget, measure the space you'll be putting the fish in and decide what fish you want from there. Now you not only know what size tank you want, what size fish that can fit into it, but also what you can afford. So let's move on to filtration. It doesn't matter what size aquarium you're setting up, it's going to need a filtration system to keep the water healthy and clean for the fish. A lot of new fish keepers are gonna start off with an aquarium starter kit. These are great because they'll come with all the basic equipment you're gonna need, and this equipment is sized appropriately for that tank. But if you wanna buy your filter separate, you've got some options. Some are great for beginners and some not so much. Your first option is gonna be sponge filters. These are by far the easiest to set up and they're without a doubt the cheapest. This is a simple sponge with a tube coming out of the top that hooks to an air pump. Water is drawn in through the sponge, which catches the debris and the water is sent out the tube in the top. Sponge filters are also a great way to get the water moving because of the bubbles. These are super efficient filters that are foolproof, but there's one huge drawback. They're super ugly and they take up valuable space in the aquarium that you could have fish in or other decorations in. So anyway, if you agree with me on that, let's move on to the next one. Your next option will be the most common, which are hang on the back filters. These filters are very efficient, they're usually pretty quiet, and they're easy to maintain. This is the type of filter I would recommend to new fish keepers just because of how easy they are. Next is canister filters. These are larger units that usually sit under the aquarium. They'll pull water in through the intake and draw it down to the unit where it's filtered and then sent back up to the aquarium. Canister filters are crazy efficient and have tons of options of stuff that you can do with them. There's a few drawbacks to canister filters though. They're pretty expensive, they take up a lot of room underneath the aquarium, and they can be a little tricky to maintain. Because we wanna keep this as easy as possible, we're gonna recommend to you to start with either a hang on the back filter or a sponge filter hooked up to an air pump. These are gonna be absolutely the cheapest and easiest filters to use for new fish keepers. And keeping that in mind, this is why we're actually not gonna talk about more advanced systems like sumps and all that. We'll save that for another video. Almost all of the fish that you'll be looking at when you get started in this hobby will be considered tropical fish. These are fish that originate throughout South and Central America, Asia, and Africa, and they're used to water that's on the warmer side, like 78 to 80 degrees. 
I'm gonna assume that your house isn't 80 degrees. It's probably more in the 72 to 74 range, and the fish, they're not gonna like that. So to fix this problem, you're gonna want a heater. There's not much to say about heaters other than you need to have one. Almost every heater for sale will have the aquarium size they're rated for on the box, so get the appropriate size. Hook it up and your fish will be happy. Yes, it's true, not all fish need a heater, but let's keep this simple and just get one anyway. Okay, this video is meant to be for beginners, so we're not gonna get into things like tubes versus LEDs and Kelvins and all that other stuff. We're just gonna keep this simple. Get a light that's appropriately sized for whatever aquarium you choose. Almost all of the lights out there right now will be perfectly fine for whatever fish you wanna keep. Sure, they might not be powerful enough to grow every kind of plant out there, but they'll be good enough to get you started. Decorating an aquarium is an opportunity to express yourself, but you need to keep in mind what fish are gonna go in the tank because some rules apply. An example would be betas. If you're setting up a beta tank, you're gonna to wanna to incorporate some plants, preferably live plants, but if that's too much, then go with the artificial plants made out of silk. Maybe you've decided you wanna get shell-dwelling African cichlids. Well, there's a reason they call them shell-dwellers. You'll wanna decorate with some large shells for them to live in. The point is, express yourself have fun, decorate your tank, do all the wonderful things you wanna do with your tank, but make sure you do research so you're doing the right thing for your fish. I'm gonna be honest with you, when I got my first aquarium back in 1993, I had no clue what the aquarium cycle was. I didn't even know it existed, and to be honest, I'd never even heard of it. When we talk about the cycle, we're talking about the nitrogen cycle in an aquarium. In a nutshell, this is the development of bacteria in your aquarium that helps keep harmful toxins like ammonia and nitrite under control. If these toxins are left unchecked, they'll absolutely kill your fish. This is why you'll hear from a lot of people, yeah, I used to have an aquarium, but after like a month, all my fish died. So I went and got a bunch more and put them in there and they died too, so I just gave up. Well, this is why we're here, to help you understand how to get through this period in a new aquarium. But unfortunately, we don't have time to go in depth about the cycle in this particular video. I'll put a card up here as well as I'll put it in the end screen of some videos that you can check out about the nitrogen cycle. I think I've done like eight of them, but it's not as complicated of a process as it may seem. It's nothing to be scared of, but it is absolutely critical if you want to be successful in this hobby. So definitely once you're done watching this, go watch those videos. Trust me, you can get a lot out of it. moment we've all been waiting for and that's to buy the fish. Do you buy the fish as soon as you set up the tank? Well you're probably not going to like my answer. We recommend that you buy your aquarium, bring it home, set up the equipment, get it all decorated and fill it with water and let it run for a bit. I'm not going to tell you how long to let it run. I just recommend that you watch the video on cycling your tank first. Here's the thing. Setting up a new aquarium is a fun and exciting thing. It's something you should enjoy and take your time with. You're not gonna enjoy it as much if you got fish in a bag that you just brought home at the exact same time as setting up the tank. You're probably gonna rush because you feel bad leaving them in the bag like that. Buy all of your stuff, get everything set up, get the water to the right temperature, and let things run for a bit. Have some patience, have fun with it, and then, when everything's ready, your cycle is where it needs to be at, go buy your fish. Just trust me on this one. I know how excited you are to get fish in your tank. But in the end, if you do things the right way, you will have a much better experience.
So there you go. I hope you've been able to get something out of this. I hope you feel better now and maybe you're not as intimidated by this whole process. For more videos like this that'll help you enjoy this hobby even more, click the subscribe button right now. It's free. And also hit the little bell next to it so that when we put up a new video, you get notified and you can watch it right away because you don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. And hey, let's all work together to keep fish keepers fish keeping.